Good morning, gladiators. Welcome back. It is Tuesday, February the 9th. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we are done with Russia. Obviously, it's going to come up on uh, your test in a couple of weeks, but we are starting our unit um, in Asia now. So we're in Asia. Yay. All right, so for today's video, you're going to watch the Geography of Asia video. So click here. This is just to give you an overview of what Asia looks like and what they have in the end. Um, Basically, in Southwest Asia is what we're going to be talking about today because we're, we're going to separate it into three sections. So Southwest Asia is where we're going to start today. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go through this PowerPoint. Again, I should have had it ready. All right, so we are going to go over. You're going to locate on a world and regional political physical map. You're going to locate the following uh, bodies of water and physical features. And of course, some of the regional areas of some of the countries. So Asia is a huge country. It's a big country. So this is why we need or a big continent, really. And this is why we need to break it down in pieces, because you have, again, Asia is such a large continent. You have Southwest Asia, you have Central Asia, you have um, East Asia. So it's a big continent. And to cover it all at once, if I were to try to cover all the geography at once, it would be too much for you. So I'm going to break it down. So the Middle East is also known as the crossroads of the world. So it's literally right in the middle, right? It's the Middle East. So you have over on the left, on the west, you have the Americas. Over on the north, you have you have uh, Russia and over on the Northwest, you have Europe below the Middle East. And even though we're counting North Africa, you have South Africa. And of course, over on the right, you have East Asia. So it's literally right in the middle. So we're gonna go over that today. So it's uh, the crossroads between three continents, Asia, Africa, and Europe. Deserts are the most common physical feature here and it covers about 66% of the area. Water is very scarce in this region, and they do have a lot of deserts, yes, but even in the parts where they have countries where people are actually living there, uh, there is water scarcity, and we're going to learn about that um, on Friday, I believe. So if you look at this, here is the Middle East, right? Your Middle East, you have North Asia, Europe's over here on the, on the left, and then you have the Middle East, Asia. So we'll talk about that, and it also counts part of Africa. You have the Euphrates River and the Tigris River. Um, both start in the mountains of Turkey and run parallel to each other in some places. Um, and then you have the Euphrates River that runs through Syria before joining with the Tigris River in southern Iraq. It then flows along the border between Kuwait and Iran and empties into the Persian Gulf. So it's almost like a vein, like a branch. Oh, here it is. Okay, so it looks like a vein, right? It's a branch. Here's the Tigris River, here's the Euphrates River, and both of them empty out into the Persian Gulf. It's a picture of it. The other Tigris River flows through Turkey and Iraq. Uh, today, the rivers still provide water for both drinking and farming. And the countries, both Turkey and Iraq, share these, um, but still there's a big issue with water scarcity. They're ir over irrigating. This is what it looks like. As you can see, some parts kind of looks dry, but you can see that they use it for irrigation. Here's the crops. And the Jordan River starts in the mountains of Israel, Lebanon, and Syria, and flows in south until it reaches the Dead Sea. Uh, it is only 20 feet wide at some parts and only 17, deep, 17 feet deep at its deepest point. Uh, the Jordan River is also important because it is a political boundary between Israel and the West Bank and Jordan. So here is the river. And you can see it goes through, here's the Jordan River, it goes through the West Bank, and eventually it just empties out into the Dead Sea. Then you have the Suez Canal. The Suez Canal connects the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea. This is a very important waterway. It's a man-made waterway, and it's used to transport goods between Asia, Africa, and Europe. Um, it basically cuts across through the three continents. We are going to really dig deep into this part today because uh, it's important that, well, you already know that 
trade is a bit is a vital part to economics but the suez canal is what helps these countries or these continents be successful economically so here's the suez canal and it literally cuts right through super tight super tight is a better picture it amazes me how they do this. That's a satellite image. And here's the Suez Canal. And the Persian Gulf is a shallow body of water between Iran and the Arabian Peninsula. This area holds one of the largest and most important oil fields in the world. So we'll always be talking about the Persian Gulf. We'll talk about the Middle East and how much, how, uh, the abundance of oil that they have. Here's the Persian Gulf. Here's some uh, oil refineries or factories. And the Arabian Sea is the most northwestern part of the Indian Ocean. It is bordered by India to the east, east of Pakistan and Iran to the north, and Arabian Peninsula to the west. So this is an important shipping route as well. Beautiful. And the Red Sea is an arm of the Indian Ocean that lies between Northeast Africa and Asia. It is linked to the Mediterranean Sea by the Suez Canal. So this was a key part of uh, during the Silk Road of trade. Beautiful, right? This is a satellite image. All right. Super easy, super easy assignment. Then what you're going to do is you can use this political map today. And you're going to use this map to label your map here in your assignment. So we're going to go through these. Uh, I really hope that you come into the Zoom today. We're going to go through these a little, in a little bit more detail. We'll, I'll ask you some questions about the importance of trade, right? Why do we need this trade? How does it help the countries? How does it help the continents? How does it help with other countries exporting and importing back and forth to one another? How does it impact cultural diffusion? So we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. All right, so you can use any political map of Southwest Asia, and you're going to label these little guys over. Okay, super easy. And then you do have some questions that are pertaining to the PowerPoint. Okay, and that's it. That's it, my angels. All right, I can't wait to see you, and I'll see you in a bit. Bye.